Welcome to Drone News Now. Welcome to Drone U HQ. As always, my name is Paul, and boy, do we have some interesting stories for you this week. As we have noted in the previous weeks, the FAA has been going through some changes with personnel, and the impacts might finally be understood as we are connecting the dots between news stories. As DroneLife.com posted a news story about the recent changes in personnel as I believe the probationary personnel in the FAA's office had actually been let go due to the doge cuts. Well, users on Reddit are now complaining that to get airspace approvals and other authorizations, it's now taking significantly longer, which raises the question, why were probationary employees dealing with airspace authorizations for drones? I guess it goes to show drone pilots really are super safe if they can be trusted at the lowest level of staffing. Curious on your thoughts there. In our next piece of drone news, many of you know already from the insane number of posts on YouTube that DJI has actually launched their new RS4 gimbal, which is a mini gimbal. But what's really interesting is how they have miniaturized the Raven Eye functionality. You can now turn any camera into an AI tracking monster remotely controlled from an application. It's amazing the things that you could mount on a gimbal and then have remotely controlled with AI tracking vision. I'm thinking a Nerf gun. I am thinking security on my porch. I am thinking a methodology of stopping porch pirates. Just my two cents. Curious what others in the robotics field think about that new one. Now here is something to pay attention to in our next piece of news, as it looks like the New Jersey drones have actually sparked a legislative change as a whole. The Defense Act, also known as the Disabling Enemy Flight Entry and Neutralizing Suspect Equipment. Wow, these congressmen and senators, I think, deserve an award for creativity. This Defense Act, though, is going to fundamentally change the way that you and I take flight. As many of you know, if there's going to be an automatic TFR or temporary flight restriction, typically over any large scale sporting event, think an NFL game, think a baseball game, but typically for these TFRs to auto populate, there has to be 30,000 people or more in attendance. Well, this Defense Act is going to change that so that way state and local authorities can create TFRs, but more importantly, this is taking the power of the feds and giving it to state and local governments. What do I mean? In previous past history, it, well, right now, uh, if you wanted to implement a drone defense system or a counter UAS technology, only the federal government is allowed to actually use those to monitor, more importantly, to mitigate. Now with the Defense Act, if this does pass, this will give state and local authorities the opportunity not just to monitor, but also to mitigate. That means, mitigation means, taking the drones out of the sky, either vis-a-vis -vis auto landing, vis-a-vis -vis sending them some packets, having them just drop out of the sky, that could be problematic, or having them go into their return to launch sequence. Either way, this is significantly improving the power for counter UAS tech. Now, why does Drone U love this? Well, because it forces them to purchase training on counter UAS systems, because as many of you know, jamming technologies are actually illegal on numerous levels, including FCC regulations. That said, this training would help showcase what counter UAS systems are actually working and what systems can be used to properly mitigate a drone, meaning sending it into return to launch or return to land. This is a huge bill that honestly could change the way that you and I navigate airspace. Now, I don't know about you, but most responsible pilots out there are not going out to film games. Now, as we had in a story recently in Baltimore, a drone had actually shut down a postseason game in Baltimore. So with this type of technology deployed in Baltimore, would it have stopped the drone? I believe so, depending on the technology. There's so much out there on good versus bad counter UAS systems. And honestly, the technology therein is extremely complicated. So we'll have more on this story later on in the year, I'm sure. And lastly, hackers go hard. Yep, hackers going hard actually means Hackers Against Remote ID. The shocking part here is that, you know, we have had videos on remote ID and why we believe it's an ineffective methodology for actually monitoring the airspace and making it a safer place to fly. Most importantly, because remote ID forces the public to have access 
to where pilots are actually flying. In one of our most recent classes of inspecting cell towers, we had that particular instructor who's also giving out drone jobs for flying power lines in remote areas. To really, to the whole point of these power line inspections was to ensure that there weren't any issues with the power lines that could spark wildfires. Well, according to our instructor, over 30 of their different pilots were shot at. So this whole idea of having remote ID available to the public is a fool's errand at best, especially when you read the judge's synopsis for when this particular regulation was challenged in court. They said that it actually did act like a digital license plate. I think the judge is extremely miseducated because if they understood what a license plate meant, that would mean that there's actually some inherent form of privacy, right? If, if Rob cuts me off in the parking lot, I can't go look up his license plate and figure out where he lives right when he's, and figure out where he's driving, exactly where he's driving and be able to track him. But with remote ID, you can do that. The biggest flaw with remote ID, if we're talking on a practical sense, is that pilots that are actually flying Cessnas, helicopters, passenger aircraft, and private jets cannot see remote ID information at all. So it makes you beg the question, how useful is remote ID? Well, now hackers are actually showcasing how to spoof our ID, but it's gotten even worse as a teenage girl is online in a new YouTube channel showcasing how not just to spoof remote ID, but how to showcase a swarm of drones to overload and crash the system. So it seems like remote ID is really popping off in all age groups of the drone industry. I, I, I can't touch this one much longer because there's just, there's just too much here. Anyway, I can't believe this. This is hilarious. There's an entire group on GitHub of hackers against remote ID. I think it's hilarious. I didn't even know this acronym was a real thing until a good friend of ours uh, corrected us on X, AKA formerly Twitter, on this particular information. In all honesty, I have to say there is a lot going on in the drone industry, which is why we have these drone news shows going on all the time. But I think you should like and subscribe, and if you wanna learn how to fly, you wanna learn the systems to limit liability, fly closer, fly lower, fly smoother, subject track and get the videos your friends simply can't get, then you've gotta check out thedroneu.com. But that's gonna do it for me and everyone here at DroneUHQ. We'll see you next time.